So if you're self-publishing your book on Amazon, you may be working with Kindle Direct Publishing to create your cover wrap. Now you can hire someone else to create your cover and cover wrap, or you can do it yourself. So today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to design your cover wrap and how to export it for print. That way when you upload it to KDP, it'll be approved and you'll be good to go. Hello everyone, my name is Mandy Lynn. I'm an author, book cover designer, and the creator of the Book Launch Planner series. I make weekly videos on the business of being an author so if that sounds good to you make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you never miss a new upload So for everyone who's interested in learning how to design their book covers themselves, I have a series of courses that you can take. It's three separate courses that cover all of the aspects of book cover design. The first course is how to use Photoshop. Second course is typography and book cover design. And the third course is actual book cover design where we cover the photo manipulation side of things. So today I'm going to be talking about how to design your paperback wrap. I'm going to do like a speed run of how to design it. If you want the full lessons on how to design your paperback wrap from start to finish without skipping any steps like we're kind of going to do today, then make sure to take the courses because I go through it in depth in those courses. I'll be doing my tutorial in Photoshop, so if you're not interested in learning how to use Photoshop, then this video might not be useful to you. But I will also be talking about how the print template for KDP works. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so here we are on the KDP website because when you publish a book with KDP, you have to use their specific print on demand templates. And that goes for any print on demand company that you use, whether it's KDP, Ingram Spark, Barnes and Noble Press, they all have different templates that you have to use. So this is the one for KDP. And I will leave this linked in the description of this video. But basically you go in here and you fill out all the information and then you download the template. So let's say today we're doing a paperback book. The interior is going to be black and white. The paper type is going to be cream. I personally always recommend doing cream. I feel like it's a little less harsh on the eyes. Occasionally nonfiction books I will do white paper, but cream is a little more subtle. Page turn direction, odds are you'll do left to right. And then measurement units, since we're in the US, we're gonna do inches. And then trim size is whatever the trim size is of the book. I'm gonna do five and a half by eight and a half. And page count, I'm going to do 300. Now, of course, make sure that whatever information you put in is specific to your book because it does matter. KDP used to round to the nearest 10 pages, but now they round to the nearest even numbers. And this is just so when you design the spine of your book, it's as precise as possible so it looks nice when it's published. So once we do that, you can hit the calculate dimensions button. This is telling you all the dimensions, but what we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the download template button and we save it to our computer. Now you will be given a zip folder. You have to extract the zip folder. So whether you're on PC or Mac, just extract it. And then you can open the folder. You'll see three different files. The one we want is the one that is for PDF. And what I usually do is I just right click on it and I hit open with and then do open with Photoshop. There's another way you can do it. You can also just be in Photoshop and go to file open and find the file there and open it that way as well. So this is what the template is going to look like when you open it in Photoshop. So let me explain this super quickly. So first we have these black solid lines. That is the trim line. That is where the book is actually going to be cut. And then we have the blue dashed line. That is the fold line of the spine. So that is exactly where it will hopefully fold the cover of the book. I say hopefully because sometimes the printing is like slightly off. It might be slightly to the left or to the right. And that's where these bleed zones come in. So this red area is the bleed zone. And basically you don't want anything important in the bleed zone. Because like I said, sometimes 
the design can be slightly off to left, right, up, or down. And the bleed zone is so that when it is cut and folded, it still looks nice. So absolutely make sure that there is no text touching any of these red lines. We don't want any p important part of like illustrations or cover art touching the red lines either. We want everything that's important to be in this white area, which is the safe zone. So please note our design will go all the way to the edge and take up the entire canvas, but it will be cut on this black line right here. And that is just so the cover looks nice and clean and beautiful when it is printed. So what you're gonna do from here is making sure that your rulers are turned on in Photoshop. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to view and make sure that the rulers are checked off. You can see mine are checked off, but if I uncheck it, they disappear, and then I can recheck it and make them reappear. So what you're gonna do from here is you're gonna create your canvas guides, and the way you do that is super simple. You click on your ruler and you drag, and you see this line come down. This is our canvas guide. And we are just gonna set up our canvas guide everywhere we where we see the lines. Now, as you see, when I did that, all these other canvas guides came up on the screen. That's because this is a document that I've already opened and set up, and I had my canvas guides hidden before. And you can hide and unhide your canvas guides at any time by going to view, and then where is it, show, and you can see canvas guides are currently checked off. If I uncheck it, they disappear. And again, I can go to view, show, and then check off canvas guides again. You're just gonna wanna put canvas guides anywhere where you see lines on the template. And then I also put canvas guides to show me where the center of the book is on the front and on the back. And my little hack to easily find the center of a book is to use my rectangle tool and draw a rectangle from edge to edge and then you see that center point right there, that is our center, and you can put a canvas guide there. And then once you have your center point, you can just delete the rectangle that you made. Now, like I said, I'm going a bit fast today because this is a YouTube video, I don't want it to be super long. If you want the full tutorial, again, take my cover design courses, but I already made the design that's gonna be, you know, the backdrop of this cover, so I already came in and I, brought the front of the cover in, I brought the back of the cover in, I even made the spine a little extra colorful. If you wanna see exactly how I did this, I show you step-by-step step me designing this exact wrap in the course, as well as this exact cover. But you can see here, it's pretty basic. I like to keep it basic when it comes to covers because I want to be able to make sure we are focusing on the text. I also did also go ahead and pre-design all the spine text. So the spine text, I basically just took the text that's on the cover, brought it into the spine. So we have the title and then the author. Instead of putting like an author name, I put in my company name just because I'll be probably be selling this as a pre-made cover eventually. But that's how simple that is. And then from here, I'm going to actually go ahead and design the rest of the cover with you guys. Um, but one thing I do want to do is I want to make sure we know where our barcode is. Because you can see it says right here, barcode location. That's because KDP will actually add the barcode in for us. So making sure we're clicking on our template layer, which is the very bottom layer of Photoshop. And again, if you aren't familiar with Photoshop, this might not make sense to you. Make sure to take my Photoshop course. I talk about the layers and all of that, and it'll make more sense if you're not familiar with Photoshop. But if you are familiar with Photoshop, make sure you're selecting that template layer. We're gonna also select our marquee tool and draw a box around the barcode or the barcode area, and then I'm gonna do Control J, and that just made a copy of the barcode onto a new layer. So let's turn our design back on, and this is the new layer we just made. I'm gonna drag it up above the design, so now we can see where the barcode is gonna be. All right, so at this point, we can focus just on the back cover, so we're gonna add in our blurb. So to do that, we're just gonna use our text tool and click and drag to make a text box like so. It fills automatically with lips and lorem, which is just filler text, but I'm going to just paste in my 
blurb for my book, Meet Me at the Summit. And as you can see, we can't see all the text. So I'm going to double click on the T over in our layers. That highlights everything. And then I'm going to pull up the character panel and change the font size to 12. I also don't like the font. I'm going to do just regular book Antiqua, which is that. And now we just kind of mess around with how things look. Um, let's see, we're going to add some spacing between each paragraph. And there's really no like rhyme or reason. We're just seeing what looks nice. The text is a little big for my taste. I'm going to make it 10. That's a little bit better. I'm also going to make it white, I think. Hmm, let's try white. Um, and what I'm going to do right now is we're going to add a layer style. So we're going to double click on the layer um, and we're just going to add some drop shadows and mess around with things. Um, I'm going fast right now, but that's just because I'm assuming you guys know how to use Photoshop. And if you don't, just make sure to take my Photoshop course. And I'm just trying to do like a subtle way to make this a little bit more readable. Hmm. I think what I want to do instead is to add a blank layer and paint with the brush and select that deep purple and bring the hardness down of the brush. And I think this will look better than anything else that we end up adding in. So again, I'm just painting with a regular old brush. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and that blurs that out way more. And then we're just going to take the opacity of that way down. Um, and now I'm going to go in and play with our layer style and just make it that much more subtle. And you can see how now our text is readable. <laughs> And then from here, we're just going to do some final things. This right here, I know, is a tagline. So I actually want that in a different font. Like, what's this font? This font is Bevis New. Um, so that's the font I want to use for our tagline that's on the back. And we could even highlight this and make it that bright yellow color that we see everywhere else. See how that pops a little bit more now? Um, and then we can also go in and make sure wherever we have the title of the book mentioned that it's in italics. So that's just what I'm doing right now. Um, so that is our, our blurb on the back of the book. Then the last thing that you'd want to do is you'd want to add in any social media info or your website. Um, since this is just a quick tutorial, I'm just going to do my website real quick. So I'm doing Stone Ridge Books since this is technically written by Stone Ridge Books. And then from there, I would just line it up with our text here and the barcode. See how those two pink guides pop up? Those are just some guides that um, Photoshop has, like they're called Smart Guides. And it just lets us quickly and easily line things up like that. And I also wanna double check that this text is centered needs to be moved just a little bit, but there we go. Again, we could add in our social media and more info if we wanted to, but since this is just a quick tutorial, this is perfect. You could also, if this was like a series, you could put the covers of the other books in the series to make sure people go ahead and read through the entire series. So at this point, what we do is that we're done designing, but we need to get ready to export for KDP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this barcode layer and I'm going to turn it off so we don't see it because that was just for us for reference for while we were designing. We didn't want we don't want to actually have that there when we export. So now at this point, this is ready to export. So what you do is you go to file and you go to save as. And you change the file type to Photoshop PDF, which is this one right here. And then you click Save. And then you hit OK. And then um, usually the defaults are OK. I personally like to uh, check off this box that says Preserve 
Photoshop editing capabilities. I just feel like it's better when you compress things as much as possible. So that's what you do when you uncheck that and then just hit save PDF. And then from there, you should be good to go. And that is the basics of designing a cover wrap for Photoshop. Again, I did a lot of stuff quickly in this tutorial and not in full detail in this tutorial. If you do want a full explanation and a full tutorial, make sure to join my cover design courses. Again, there's a course just on Photoshop, there's a course on typography, and then there's a course on the actual cover design. In both the typography course and the cover design course, I cover doing um, paperback wraps, hardcover jackets, case laminates for hardcovers, um, and everything in between. And I tell you how to upload for KDP, for Ingram Spark, and basically for any other print on demand company that is out there. Otherwise, that is it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comments down below. If you wanna see any other like quick cover design tutorials, be sure to request them in the comments and I'll try my best to do them. Uh, but I will see you all next week with another video.